Okay, something a bit more fun for this week's tutorial. I'm going to show you how to draw this, break it down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can have a go, create this, and amaze yourself. Okay, so as explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so that you learn about the painting process and techniques, as well as about the app I'm using Procreate. But that isn't to say you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet, but I am using Procreate. So within the settings, the wrench, canvas, canvas information, and dimensions, you'll see that I'm using the 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. Now that is the default A4 canvas, but that is apparently just a UK and Europe size. So if you're in the US, then I would rely upon perhaps the pixels, and that's 3,508 by 2,480 pixels. In terms of the color profile, well, I'm using the default color profile within Procreate, which is the sRGB code, the one that ends in 2.1 here on the list. If for some reason it's set to a different one, then put it to this so your colors will be the same as mine. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to use the default brushes that come with the app Procreate. So within airbrushing, I'm going to use the soft brush, the medium brush, maybe the medium hard brush. Within luminance, I might use the light pen. And then in terms of the colors, well, I've already pre-selected a color palette suitable. Each of these colors, if you go to the value section, has in this box what we call a hexadecimal code associated with it. And each of these colors, each of these codes is down in the video description. So you can just copy and paste them into this box one at a time and press enter. The color appears up here and then you can tap it into the color palette. And you can do all of that yourself or alternatively to save you some time next to the codes in the video description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page where you can download the color file for free. And Patreon is also the place that you can support this channel and gain access to exclusive content such as extended versions of most of these tutorials. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who do support me over at Patreon. It really does make a huge difference, so thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, we're going to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my canvas, my A4 canvas, to the portrait orientation. Now I'd also like to point out that my camera sometimes will distort the colours, but don't worry, if you've got the colour palette or you've copied the codes, then you are using the correct colours. I'd also like to draw your attention to, within the wrench symbol, preferences, I do have the dynamic brush scaling toggled on. If you untoggle it, then your brush will appear at different sizes depending on how you're zoomed in, which we don't want. We want to keep it consistent. So again, wrench, preferences, dynamic brush scaling needs to be toggled on. And now, doesn't matter whether you zoom in or not, that brush is going to stay consistent at any zoom level which is exactly what we need. Now, the first thing we're gonna do with this canvas is go to my colors, the first color on the top row, and just drag that dark black color into the canvas area. It flood fills. Now, we don't wanna keep a completely black background, so we're gonna to go to our colors, the second color on the top row. We're gonna go in with the soft brush within airbrushing. I'll put it up to a pretty big size, maybe 30%, and not too big on the opacity, so maybe about 30% of that. And then I'm just going to start tapping in some of this blue over at the top left, especially near the top corner. But generally, I'm just bringing some different colors into our scene. So it's a very dark blue. If you go to the color disk, you'll see where it's located. So just some of that in that top corner. It doesn't have to be consistent. Go to our colors again, third color on the top row. Maybe just some of it creeping in over on this side. And your placement doesn't have to be exactly the same as long as we're getting some variation of colors. Just a bit more there at the top left. Back to our colors, fourth color. Maybe some nice warmth coming through the top area too. Just tap it in a few times. It is pressure sensitive, so if you press harder, you'll get more of it. But I'm generally tapping quite lightly. Go to the fifth colour. Maybe just a bit of this slightly warmer colour here at the top. Just graze it in. And you can see we've got some kind of mottled 
muted colors there in the background now. If you're worried about banding and other things, well, you can always go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and you can see, because we've zoomed in, if you just zoom it to even 10% is enough just to soften those in. I'm gonna to go to the layers, click the plus symbol, create layer two. Then I'm gonna to go to the selection, put it on the rectangle, and then just that bottom area, drag a rectangle to cover it, let go. And you can see it's now selected this area. Drag the seventh color from the corner into that box and it flood fills, deselect the selection. Go back to the layers, tap on the N and the opacity then we can dial back. Perhaps just make it a little bit more subtle than that. So maybe about 60%. Back to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. And we're gonna slide that across somewhere not too far along, maybe about 30%. Deselect. And that's just gonna give us something of a background, a platform to sit our little character, our little snowman. Okay, we're gonna to go to our layers and create a new layer, layer three. Then we're gonna to go to selection, put it on ellipse, draw or drag out a rough elliptical shape, kind of circular, but if it's a little bit off from circular, doesn't really matter. Doesn't also matter where you place it for now. Go to our colors and choose the fifth color on the middle row. Drag from the corner into there and it completely fills that circle. Deselect. We can go to the transform, put it on uniform and we can play around with the size and positioning. And I want to leave enough space at the top for the flame, but I don't want it to be too small either. Somewhere about there. Then I can go to the layers, slide and duplicate it. Bottom version, top version, doesn't really matter. Transform, move it lower down. And then we're gonna increase the size for the body. Now again, we want to leave a little bit of space at the bottom, but not too much. And your proportions, your ratio of size is kind of your choice. I think somewhere around there works for me. So the head is definitely smaller than the body. Then I'm gonna put a brush to the medium hard brush, turn it down to maybe 5% size, 100% opacity, and I'm just gonna soften in that tr transition point. Doesn't have to be completely even on both sides. It doesn't really matter. A little bit of asymmetry is actually going to look better. Take the top layer, tap on it and merge down. So now we have all of that on one layer. I'm gonna to go to the eraser, put the eraser on the hard brush with an airbrushing, put it to maybe 10% size, 100% opacity, and we're just gonna flatten out that bottom edge. So rotate it if you need to. It's not a straight line. It's just a little bit of an arc like so. And that's too straight. So let's try that again. A little bit of a curve to it. I think that works better. It just needs to sit on the surface and create a flattening at the bottom. Then we're gonna to go to the layers, create a new layer, layer four, tap on it and put on the clipping mask, which creates a little arrow that links it to layer three. So if we're gonna go in with another color, it stops at the boundary and that's probably not the right color to choose. Let's choose a brighter color so you really see that. It stops at the boundary, even though it's a new layer, it sticks to the edges of the layer that's actually underneath it and it's linked to, which is perfect. So go back to our colors, maybe go for the yellow at the very end. We'll go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing, 10% size, 20% strength. And we're gonna have the candle flame at the top. So we need some nice warm, but bright yellow glow coming through here at the top. So just a little bit there, then We'll go to our first color on the middle row. And at the bottom, we're gonna have some shadow so we can bring it in along this bottom edge. Go over it a few times. Go to the second color on the middle row. And just extend that shadow up a little bit. And it doesn't really matter the smoothness of this. We can always use the Gaussian blur to soften this in. Go to the third color. Okay, and just extend some of that across to about the center of the belly, but I'm only pressing super lightly for that. Go to the fifth color, which we've already used, so we can probably skip that. We'll go to the sixth color, and then where the neck of our little character is, we're gonna start adding some of this color in there. And we can also bring that down and merge it with the brown colors that are here too. 
And if you do a little bit too much of a particular color, when well, it doesn't really matter, you can go back in and soften it in. We'll bring that across just a hint where the neck would be, just across that line. We're starting to get a nice sort of separation of those round shapes now. Let's go to the next color, the seventh color. Maybe start turning it down a little bit. So maybe 7%, still at the 20% strength. We're going to get a nice glow coming through in this section too. Maybe push that upwards a little bit and also down and also across the neck. So that gives us just a rough sense of where to put things. I've not gone too far with that yet. I think really we should start adding the flame and that's going to give us the light in our scene and make sense of everything. But before we do that, we're going to go back to layer three. We're going to go with the razor. Put the razor maybe to the medium brush with an airbrushing. 3% size, 70% strength. And again, we're just going to chip away at the top a little bit, flattening out. We're going to have a flame melting candle wax. So maybe it's just created a little bit of a flat edge here at the top. Stay on layer three. I'm going to go to the smudge, put the smudge on the hard brush with an airbrushing. 2% size, 100% opacity. And I'm just going to push up from the center there, the beginning of a little candle wick, like so. Stay on that same layer as well. And we'll go for the first color on the top row. We'll turn the brush size down to 2% and 100% opacity. And the top end of that will just create the little top end of that wick as well. Have a bit of a wiggle to it. Don't make it completely straight lined i think it's more interesting if it has a little bit of character like so so go to our layers create a new layer layer five tap on the n put it on the add blend mode and we're going to go in with third color this blue on the bottom row and we're going to go to the soft brush with an airbrushing two percent size really quite low only five percent strength opacity and then quite low down From the, the wick, really, we're just going to bring in some of this quite vibrant blue. You're not going to see a lot of this by the end, but I think just to set the foundation, start it off with this colour is a good idea. We definitely want a little bit of that blue in there. It brings a bit more realism. Back to our colours. We'll go to the fourth colour on the bottom row. And then you can just bring on those edges changes from blue into this color and we can bring that up we can set the shape for our flame round it off at the top is a better look and then we can just start to build it up the brightest point of the flame is going to be this central point here let's turn it up a little bit 20 percent strength three percent size let's just get that brightness in there and then we can soften it in to the edge. And then it fades off at the top a little bit. Bring it down so it starts to meet the top of the wick. But then we're creating this kind of a round shape almost around that area. Again, brightest in the very center, like so. Then we can go to the adjustments, the bloom. We'll just dial that up to 100%, deselect, and that's getting us quite a long way towards the effect that we want. Now, if you feel like it's gone a bit too broad, which is easy to do, well, on that same layer, we'll go to the transform, freeform, and we just pinch it in from either side, just narrow it up a little bit. Pretty easy to distort and change. I think that works a bit better. We're gonna create a layer above that, layer six, we're going to tap on the end again put it on the add blend mode we're going to go for maybe this color the eighth color on the bottom row still with a soft brush let's put it pretty big maybe 30 percent size but keep it low only five percent strength opacity and then in this whole kind of upper area just tap it in and around there start to create this sense of glow emanating from that in fact maybe go to an even bolder color so maybe go backwards seventh color even warmer and then we just tap it in and around here want it to be quite impactful 
just circle it in and around that whole area, not too much. But certainly I want to see its impact. Go to a eighth color again, bring it down 20% size. And then the center of that, we also want to ramp up some of this orange glow again. In that center, turn it down again, 3%. And now I just want to soften those edges, bring some of that on the edges. Like so. You can take that layer, adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur that in slightly so it softens it, maybe 10%. I'm going to take that layer, tap on it, and merge down. So we have all of that on one layer now. We'll create a new layer, change the blend mode from normal to add again. We'll go in with the fourth color on the bottom row. We'll come to the light pen in a moment. We'll stick with the airbrushing medium brush, 2% size, only just, and 50% strength. Zoom in. And we can just gently blend this color and press lightly to do so. Bring it down. I just want to get this candle flame looking really nice. I think if this looks good, then it's going to sell the rest of it, which is quite simple. The actual character is obviously going to be quite a simple design. But if we get the elements like the flame looking really good, then it really just enhances the whole image. And then we're going to turn the opacity down, maybe 10%. And we can just blend this in a little bit. Bring it down, blend it through, soften it in this area. Maybe down even further, 5%. And just blend this in here, soften it in, like so. We'll go to the first color on the bottom row, just these edges. Bring it up along those edges a little bit. That looks nice. And then just for the very center, we will go to the light pen. So the luminance light pen. We'll go in with the fourth color on the bottom row. And just be careful of this. We'll start in that very center and it will just ramp up that light, but then just press more lightly as you go upwards until you get to that very edge. You just, it's pressure sensitive, so you can have a really big version of it you press lightly and you have a thinner line so just be aware that it will change and then you can go to the adjustments Gaussian blur zoom in and we'll just blur that in to about the 10 percent and deselect and I think that's enough for the candle flame for now so let's create a new layer layer 7 and we'll go in with the first color on the top row we'll go in with the airbrushing medium hard brush Put the brush size maybe to about 4% and 100% opacity. And we're just going to put our little snowman eyes in here. That poor little character that's <laughs> perhaps looking a little bit frightened or alarmed. We'll go to the ninth color and we'll put the mouth in. And like an upside down smile, I guess, is going to convey <laughs> the expression. So maybe 2% size, 100% opacity. And we'll just create a little upside down face looking a bit concerned shall we say and again it doesn't need to be overly neat imagine it's made out of wax so you get a little bit of a rough edge to it and that's fine let's go to our other colors we've got the six color and we can start to put in the little carrot for a nose let's put the center of it in there maybe extend it out a little bit project it out i don't want it to collide with the other eye though so just be mindful of that back to the First color on the top row, and let's think about buttons. Put it up 4%, 100% opacity, and just circle it in. Again, doesn't need to be overly neat. A couple of those. But obviously, we can add a lot more believability, a lot more realism to this too. But in a moment, we'll go to maybe the 10th color on the bottom row 2% size, 100% opacity. Zoom out. We want little twigs, maybe a bit higher on the 2%, bigger. Have little branches, little twigs, something like this. Another one over here. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. We'll just get the placement in to begin with, and then we can refine. Go to the fifth color on the middle row, still with the medium hard brush, lower on that 2%, 100% opacity, and let's just put a little reflection in that top corner, just to give it a bit of sheen, a bit of shine. Same for the buttons. That instantly gives it a bit more believability. Same brush, same settings. 
we're just going to go and bring build out this snow so it kind of surrounds the twig maybe it's encapsulated in kind of wax or if you like to think of it as snow then you can think about it either way and just sort of tap it in in around that twig and it's going to have to be different colors on this side so on this side perhaps we'll go along to the sixth color on the middle row and then we can build it out on this side in and around the twig and I'm keeping it quite patchy I want it almost to be a little textured and then blend it in again with the main body of the snowman now with any of these features if you want to you can always go to the selection freehand you could grab it close the loop transform and you can increase the size distort it play around with it until you're happiest with it again there's no right and wrong play around with your expression of your snowman and see what works what doesn't work there's definitely no right and wrong we will go backwards to layer four we'll go in with a soft brush in the airbrushing and perhaps we'll go to the fourth color on the middle row and it's just a, a note darker than the the brightest color the fifth color so it's going to be useful just to bring in some shadow so four percent size 20 percent strength and we're going to build in some sort of shadow around these features we can go in and add some warmer colors and highlights too but let's just build in some slight more shadow face and it's a layer underneath so it's not interfering with the the eyes or the nose or anything else so just circle that in let's increase the size maybe to 10 percent let's just bring that across the middle of our snowman a little bit not to the very edge but a bit more in the center 10th color more bright color at the very top Go to the eighth color, the orange, put it in the neck area here, maybe extend it up. We're gonna go in with the fourth color on the middle row, 2% size, maybe lower on that 2%, 20% strength, and maybe just at the bottom of the mouth, we could have a bit of a highlight. Imagine the light coming in from here, impacting at the bottom, maybe turn it down even more really at the lowest end of two percent and we can just be a bit more controlled maybe we could bring some of that just as a secondary kind of light just creeping around that edge more of it over here just a little bit maybe at the very edges not too much though maybe tenth color maybe where the eyes are sunken in it's going to be a bit thinner and a bit closer to the center so four percent size 20 percent strength just around that eye bring some of that lightest color in just a bit more. We'll go to a warmer colour, eighth colour even on the bottom row. Just circle some of that in as well. And then the neck, blend it up through the top, a little bit over here as well. Quite subtle transitions of colours. Now I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur that in. Not too much, maybe about 10%. Deselect, so that's softened it somewhat. Okay, we'll go back to the top layer layer seven go to the nose this time we'll go in with the soft brush with an airbrushing so we're going to go two percent size maybe 40 percent strength we'll go in with the seventh color and we'll just bring some of that very top of that little carrot nose turn it down even more one percent let's go to the eighth color and then just in kind of curved shapes just start to bring that along the very top starting to make it look a bit more realistic I'll zoom in so you can really see that just gently bring that sense of round shapes down onto the bottom section only subtly and then perhaps we can add a bit of a sheen to it as well so maybe the yellow color turn that down really low on that one percent still 40 percent strength then we can just add a sense that it's reflecting back the light from the candle at the very top so these little touches that is going to make it work it's going to give it a sense of realism and the realism is kind of important to this image because the cuteness of the character is offset by the the reality of the look really in a way and then with the eyes maybe we'll go in with the fourth or sorry the fifth color again 
break up that light a little bit, make it a bit more interesting. Turn the opacity down 10%. We can have some secondary lights coming in there as well. Make it even more realistic. Secondary lights over here. Again, just break that up. That works better. Maybe the yellow could be impacting. So we'll not do it as a yellow. We'll do it as the eighth color on the bottom row. And we could have the, the candle, the glow of it impacting the top of the eyes as well. Just a little bit. That's starting to work better. We could even go to the, well, let's go to the fourth color. Add a bit more bright. Let's turn the opacity up 25%. So just add a point of light in there. It's going to reflect the candle better. I'm going to go to the mouth. Still on that top layer, we're going to go in with the fifth color and we're going to go in with the medium brush, 2% size, maybe 20% strength. And let's just really ramp up the highlight on the mouth. Not on that top bit, we maybe even need a little bit of shadow up there. So maybe the third color. facing away from the candlelight and it's just it's going to have a little bit of shadow on that perhaps put that up three percent size down to three percent opacity perhaps even extend that up here down underneath the mouth perhaps it's got a little bit of shadow underneath there let's move down a little bit of shadow around that button it's not dark enough to really interfere with the black too much too bothered about that it's just put it in and around there okay we'll create a new layer layer eight we'll go in with the fifth color on the middle row we'll go in with the soft brush three percent size maybe 40 percent strength and then we'll just create some shapes that drip down in hit this area turn it down maybe two percent let's create some shapes that are just melting down here and then over this side a little bit more subtle Maybe turn it down on the opacity, so 20%. Got some round blobs at the bottom. And another one round here. Maybe down even further. 10% strength. Circle in the bottom of it and then lead it up here. Another one here, maybe. Doesn't have to be too neat at this stage because really the definition is going to, and the realism is going to come from the blending and then the little highlights on them. So. Don't worry too much, really. Maybe another one down here. Another one here. Then we can go to the smudge. Smudge on the soft brush with an airbrushing. 4% size, 100% opacity, and, well, a lot of the blending in can be achieved with this brush. So soften it in at the top. It becomes more noticeable when it actually forms the bottom of the drip. Let's just soften it in up there. Then we can go back in with the... Let's go for the medium brush. Still the fifth color on the middle row. Lowest part of 2% size, maybe higher now at 40% strength. Zoom in. In fact, even lower on that. So let's go down to quite low on the 1%. And then we can just trace around this edge of it a little bit. Maybe in some of these, it's not quite on the edge. It's just got a bit of a sheen on it. But then maybe there's a secondary light over at this side, just on the very edge. Try to keep this smooth. When you zoom out, it, you can see it kind of takes on that look quite nicely. But in and around this button, it's just catching the light of that edge. Secondary light, primary light coming from this side, obviously. Just creating little sheens. Maybe another area there, it's just catching the light. And it's subtle, but looks kind of nice. Along there, bring some of the highlights along here. A couple of points of shine along here as well. And even then, it's going to not necessarily be an absolutely pristine. It's not going to be quite like water. It might just sort of melt in irregular ways. So you don't need to worry about it being absolutely perfect. Put it back up. 2% size and back down to maybe about 5% strength. And then we can just bring out the end of them if necessary. Blend them up. Perhaps we should add a white. We haven't actually got a white. So let's go double tap in the white area and I'll... Put it on the color codes and on the download file, don't worry. But I'm adding it mid-tutorial, but it will always be there on the version you've got. 2% size, maybe 30% strength, and we just need to ramp up in one or two areas that sheen. Because especially when you come over to the brightest side, you're not going to notice it otherwise.
and then we're also going to go in with the fourth color because we need to add some shadows to this so it's not enough just to create the highlights you need shadows so two percent size maybe ten percent strength and underneath these drips in fact, a bit bigger than that maybe stronger than that 20 percent so these overhangs i'm going to create shadows too so the light's coming from here so this side of it is going to be a shadow this side of it is going to be a shadow and probably on the darker side the shadows need to be even stronger but we'll do these ones first and that really helps bring them out it's an important part of that look go to a darker color so back to the third color maybe over here underneath there for example it just is a bit stronger in the shadow turn it up three percent size down to ten percent strength and you can just soften that in smooth it in back one more second color you can exaggerate that shadow a little bit more in places if it's needed and then bring that almost up a little bit too around the buttons not too much though back to the bottom of our little character so we might do this on layer four go in with the medium brush we'll go in with the second color two percent size ten percent strength and we'll, we'll just create a bit of a shadow at this bottom edge just so it kind of sits there a little bit more that works a bit better still on layer four i'm going to go in with maybe the ninth color on the middle row soft brush with an airbrushing three percent size 10% strength. Let's just go in around these eyes and other features. Kind of want them to kind of glow around that a little bit more. Turn it down 2%, 30% strength or so. And let's just bring in, bring a bit of highlight around the eye. Even around the nose. Maybe we should go to the top layer, create a new layer, layer nine. And then we're just starting to add some touches here so with that same color still the ninth color we'll have a drip that's just coming down from here and it's on two percent size 30 percent strength or so bring it up here we can then go to the fifth color one percent size maybe 50 percent strength 55 create secondary light sources just around the edge and then to the tenth color on the middle row extra bright as it gets near that top candle light or flame I should say the whole thing's a candle isn't it I guess we'll go to the fifth color perhaps we'll go to a harder brush so medium brush two percent size 50 percent strength and well we can create a little drip maybe another one forming a, a little a run that's coming down and that makes sense because we've got it down there as well go to the white eighth color on the top turn that further down and we can again just push that edge that highlight bring it in here as well ought to go back to the soft brush one percent size 20% strength and we'll just bring some highlights around this side some finishing touches it doesn't need to be smooth it could be you've got some texture in here have it a little less smooth perhaps there's no reason it needs to be absolutely smooth what we could do is perhaps just put that up 50% and make the edge of the snowman a little less regular as well so we can alternate between the fifth color and the white color Make the edge of our snowman a bit more bobbly, less round. A bit more bobbly, I think it looks better for it. Go to one of the more subdued colours, the well the third colour on the middle row. Again, we could have little drips that are coming around the edges over here. Makes it look more 3D. Fourth colour. Get a, another drip here. Ok, 
again with the fifth color, a bit of a highlight, just secondary light. Maybe a bit more around some of little branch details as well. Not too much. It's quite nice if it's a little bit darker on that side, a bit brighter over here. Just tap it in. It doesn't need to be smooth and neat around the edge. Going with the pen color. Still with the soft brush, 1% size, 50% strength. Bring some of that white light from the flame around this edge. Bring it along the top. A couple of drips there maybe, starting to run down. Blend that in. I think there needs to be a bit more shadow around the nose, so let's go for the third colour. And probably turn the opacity down to about 20%. Still the same brush, but underneath the nose needs to be a bit more shadowed. Not too much, just a bit. 3%, 2% size, just underneath there. Maybe turn it up. 5% size and 10% strength. Maybe this side of the face, just a little bit more shadowed as well. That way it's going to bring the glow of the eye out a little bit better. This bit of the body a bit more shadow. Eighth colour, 2% size, 20% strength. Go in there, just bring out a bit more glow. That's just coming through a little bit perhaps. We'll go to the eighth colour, soft brush. 4% size, maybe 10% strength, and just inside the mouth, just a few touches, just so it's not completely flat looking. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to go backwards to layer 2. I'm going to go in with the colours up here. So I'm going to go to the 6 colour, 5% size, 10% strength, and I'm just going to have some texture, some colours meeting the snowman. Some bands across here, nothing major, just a little bit, then turn it down, 2% size, add some little textures, some blobs that might turn it up a little bit, 30% size, maybe just a little bit over here, you don't want to do too much of this, you don't need to add too much, couple here, like this, go to the 10th colour, 10% size, 30% strength. We can add a nice warm colour in here as well. Go in with maybe the fifth colour on the middle row. Still the soft brush. 2% size. 20% strength. And we can just, yeah, just create some extra little things down here. Maybe even some shadow on this side. So maybe go to the first colour on the top row. 5% size. And maybe just, yeah, just ground it with a little bit of shadow. Makes sense. Something like this. Maybe go to layer four. Again, just add a bit more of that shadow. I think that works better. From layer two, we'll create a new layer above that. So layer 10 is down there. We'll go in with the hard brush. We'll go in with the fifth color on the top. Maybe 25% size and 50% strength. And we can just create the almost like the effect of bokeh with a few points in the background here. Don't need to do too many of them. And then just adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur that in. Maybe about 10%, maybe a bit less, 8%, that should do. Okay, I'm gonna leave this image at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Don't forget to hit subscribe on your way out and I shall see you back here soon.